actually all started behaving well. <laughs> okay. Um, Lola, are you still, are you okay? Yeah, I'm you still upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Let's see if anybody notices. Your wife, oh my God. Your husband is not home. He's on a, he's in a meeting, so I can't use his laptop. You know why what? Is this upside down. This so, is... so I mean, you may have to just come off camera and and we we'll just explain it. But I, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I feel you. Yeah. Sorry. You can, you can show him. Every... Try and turn your camera upside down, really, and see what happens. Yeah, but it's my webcam. It's my laptop. So. Oh, and you don't have an external one. What's well, I have an external one, but when I do the external one, then it doesn't show at all. I have an external webcam. Oh, okay. but then um, when I use this external webcam, it's not, I have the external one, but it's not showing. Yes, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I would love to show my face, but. I know. Well, yeah. you, you can show it to us and wave and I'm sure everybody will understand what's happening. Oh, yeah. You okay. can show it and make people laugh. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. okay. I'm going to make you a host right now. Um, Jeff and then you can admit everybody, okay? I keep feeling there's something I'm forgetting. <laughs> no, we're good. I think everybody's here. Mm -hmm. This time we're forgetting so many things, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you do so many things at the same time. Okay. Okay, are we good to go? I'll Ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. Good evening, everyone. So we are going to start almost right on time tonight. So that allows all of the participants the opportunity to have more time in the breakout rooms, the, the fun stuff after Shay's presentation. Um, so again, good evening and welcome back to the second part in our series. Uh, tools to propel black success. So thank you for joining us tonight. If this is your first time, uh, welcome. If it's you came to any of our events before, welcome back. So our theme for tonight is defining our tomorrow. And again, this is a two part session where you will walk away knowing how you can boost your self confidence, cultivate inclusive thinking and build leadership skills that drive your personal and professional growth. So a little bit of, of housekeeping. And uh, so please keep yourself muted as much as possible. I know there's some of you off camera, but um, um, if you are joining us for the breakout rooms, it'd be really great if you're on camera. Hi, Diamond. If you're on camera, because um, then it allows you to participate more. And Shay's presentations are usually very interactive as well. So it'd be great if you're also on, on camera. Um, so we're going to start with a presentation by Shay, followed by uh, a, a bit of a Q&A, and then we're going to go into breakout rooms and, and go through some questions. And everyone will be assigned to rooms um, with our, our uh, mentors. Evangeline, do you want me to just go ahead and do the land and territory or are you going to, to introduce everybody? If you can do that, please, let's get okay. that off. Okay, so today we're honoring the land and territory. Halton, as we know it today, is rich in the history and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis, from the lands of the Anishinaabe to the Adawandaran to the Haudenosaunee and the Métis, these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in indigenous history and culture. 
As we gather today on these treaty lands, we are in solidarity with our indigenous brothers and sisters to honor and respect the four directions, lands, waters, plants, animals, and ancestors that walked before us and all the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations for being stewards of this traditional territory. We also want to take this opportunity to recognize and, and march in solidarity with all the other cultures, Black, Asian, and other racialized groups around us tonight. We honor you all. Over to Evangeline Chima, our founder of BMI and executive director. Thank you, Ingrid. I see Lola is still trying to get that camera fixed. <laughs> Good evening. Oh my God. Lola, we're laughing with you. We love you. We love you. Hey. Okay. I'm here anyway in the upside down world. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Um, today is another sad day. In many Black communities, the world over, a 20 year old man, Dante Wright, was laid to rest across the border from us. His life was cut short and sadly, since then, barely two weeks ago, we have had more black lives cut short. Yet only two, we had one wing where a police officer was found guilty, guilty, guilty. Because millions of us united and demanded justice. To keep moving the stage of black equality forward, we must stay united. We must lift each other, mentor, love one another. The mission for BMI is to ensure Black people and people from diverse communities have a safe space to learn without fear of being judged, to fill in the gaps and offer Black professionals personal and professional support. We are underrepresented across industries, people, especially in leadership roles, in government and legislative positions. This is why BMI strives to create an inclusive world where every black person reaches personal and professional expansion through education, mental and skills building. By providing education and mentorship, Skills building, we nurture future leaders and thus we empower our various communities. Our mentorship programs promote career ambition, offer startups, entry level, mid career programs, the enlightenment required to propel in business and the workplace. And in so doing, we together. We are helping eradicate system barriers that's been holding us down. Generations before us have worked hard. They've stood tall to demand a world where we are all equal, regardless of our race or our beliefs. Inclusion is strength. We must do our own part to make sure that we threaten our communities in order to allow all of us to propel. Help make the slogan, hash propel black sources go viral. Tweet, share, let us make propelling black sources a mission for all. Thank you for joining this evening. I know it's going to be an empowering section. Okay, I'm going to start doing a very brief introduction to our mentors. You all saw them yesterday and if you didn't, well, they're gonna wave your hands and, um, and meet you all. And hopefully when you go into the breakout rooms, you get to learn more about them. I'll start with Lala, and um, thank you, Lala. I see you are no longer upside down. <laughs> Lala is the founder and CEO of Eat Super. 
The next BMI mentor here today is Jules Batson, who is a project director. I have Nihil. Nihil with Click is a Canadian certified counselor, somebody we definitely need in this day and time. And of course, I have Ingrid Wilson, senior HR executive, diversity strategist, and I'm proud to say a BMI director and mentor. Now, let me take a few minutes to introduce to you Shay Marville, a wonderful woman that Ingrid introduced me, and I am so delighted that she is in my life, in my circle. Shay is a wellness pioneer, a CEO of Elvren. I always struggle to pronounce it. Uh, she's a media and coaching specialist, a podcast host, a producer, a coach, host of the Let's Talk podcast with Shay Maveo. We're going to start like Ingrid said with Shay, so Shay, take it off and Hello, thank you so much. I'm so grateful and thank you, Evangeline and Ingrid for inviting me to this um, extremely incredible uh, experience. I'm wondering, Jeff, are you able to share my presentation? And hello to everyone. I'm, and I made a big presentation, but it needs to be short. So I'm gonna go a bit fast so that we can actually practice some wellness together, right? Does everyone wanna practice some wellness together? Yes. Uh, so are you able to share the presentation? Yes, do we not? Oh, oh, great, excellent. Okay, so um, now I know that everyone might be feeling all sorts of things right now. Oh, Jeff, how are we gonna do this? Are you going to, should I just say go to the next slide? Okay. I can just read you as, as well, you know. Okay, so welcome to Fighting Pandemic, the Pandemic Fatigue, Propelling Well-Being and Success. Notice that I have placed well-being in front of success because what I want to suggest to everyone tonight is that paying attention to your well-being is a part of creating success. Next slide, please. And the next slide is... <laughs> Just so you know, we're going to try to go through this agenda very quickly uh, of setting an intention. I'm going to do some definitions of what pandemic fatiguing is, definition of well-being, and then there's some really important words that we all need to be aware of and we need to invest into in our lives. Oh, not yet. Sorry. <laughs> okay, neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, cognitive diversity and mindfulness. These are words I want to explore with you tonight. Next slide. Again, I just want to thank everyone and we've already acknowledged uh, that we are sitting on the land of, four, of 13 nations here in Ontario. I don't know, well maybe there's more people from around the world on our, our presentation tonight. So um, I think we always want to acknowledge the land of the Indigenous people because we are part, we are part of what they have created. And it's so important to build respect and in, in understanding our own well being, in understanding our own well being, we must respect the well being of others and the ecosystem in which not, not only do we live in, but we are a part of a natural ecosystem, right? And so I'd like to encourage you all also to take a moment right now to make sure you're in a very comfortable space, to make sure that you're in a chair that you're very comfortable in, and that you actually acknowledge yourself. You acknowledge yourself in this moment. Acknowledge the chance that you are taking to spend time and network with people, some you know and some you don't know, right? And that you acknowledge that in this moment, you are also reaching into your deepest self to be well and to be successful. Next slide. So just so you know a little bit about me, um, I'm a little old, so 
I've done a lot of things. Um, I'm an internationally certified meditation and master yoga teacher. I'm certified in five different traditions. I'm also trained in social science from York University, Glendon College. I was a researcher at the Ontario Science Center for, oops, <laughs> Jeff, you're so fast. Um, I was a researcher at the Ontario Science Center specializing in anti-racism and social science for over a decade. And then I went on to be the senior wellness advisor for University Health Network, St. Joe's Hamilton Health Network. Um, I was the executive director of the Children's Own Museum. I was co-vice president of the New Democratic Party. I was vice president at uh, Origin Active Living. All this to say to you, I have had a very diverse and eclectic career. And that's why I enjoy being a part of this group and mentoring and sharing and being mentored, right? Because we have to be able to not just grow and learn, but adapt and then pivot. And you know, many of you are hearing the word pivot right now, and we don't all know what that means and how we actually do it but we can do it based on our experience, the communities we come from, our learning and our ability to learn more and to always imagine there's more for me in this world. I don't have to just be stuck in what I was trained in or I don't have to just do what the job that I've always done. I can always grow into more. So next slide. Hey, Jeff, you know what? If I knew that we were going to be working together this way, I would have called you earlier and we could have, uh, you know, collaborated more. Now, let's get into something a little more serious here. You know, COVID has transformed our whole life. And as of this month, oh my goodness, as of this month, we are now 14 months into this pandemic. It's affected the entire world and 1.6 billion workers. I'm gonna say that again, 1.6 billion workers have had their lives altered. And for vulnerable communities, communities that um, are people of color, communities where um, there is poverty, where there is crime, where there is a lack of food opportunity, right? They have been hit the hardest. And in a recent study here in Canada, 56% of Canadians are, have said that they feel tremendous anxiety. You know that number is probably a little bit low, right? Because you know, we, often we don't actually say how we truly feel. But the number that's really alarming is what's happening with people between the age of 18 and 34. 63% of young people are suffering from anxiety and depression. Right. And so and the and all the things that have happened with the pandemic have triggered, triggered all sorts of anxieties, um, uh, different types of addictions, uh, weight gain, lack of mobility. Alcoholism is on the rise. I spoke to an ICU doctor last week who told me in his life he has never had so many people who are suffering from the disease of alcoholism or dying because of the disease, disease of alcoholism. And that has happened in the last 14 months. Next slide, please. The long-term effects have yet to be identified and even defined. And new research is indicating that employees in particular are putting in more hours experiencing higher rates of burnout and exposure to more stress, stress from work, stress from home. And so what we see is a rise in mental health illnesses. And a number of the mentors today, <clears throat> tonight, have, a, <clears throat> excuse me, have a specialization in mental illness and can talk more about that. But, you know, this is also a time for us to destigmatize what mental health is and what mental illness is and what well-being is and we have to be unafraid to talk about the things that make us well and looking after ourselves mental illness in the world is in the world is now sadly sadly costing 
the global economy trillions and trillions of dollars. And it's estimated, and this estimate was actually done prior to the pandemic. It's estimated that mental illness is gonna cost $16 trillion by the end of 2030. So it is incumbent on all of us to not just think about success, in our professional and economic life, but to really think about success in our well being. Next slide, please. A new study by Dan Schwabel, in partnership with Oracle, estimates that 70% of people have had more stress and anxiety at work this year. And you know, that doesn't even include all the people who are out of work. 85% of people say their mental health issues at work are negatively affecting their home life. 76% of people believe companies should be doing more to support the mental health of their workforce, right? And it's not just companies, but it's actually our governments. You know, our governments actually need to be talking to us about how they can support all of us around mental well-being and emotional well-being. Next slide. So what is this word? Does anyone know what it is? Anyone want to write in the chat what they what they think this word is? Okay, next slide. <laughs> the word is unprecedented and that's the time we are living in. Oh, I love that Nicole um, recognized that it was unprecedented. We are living in unprecedented times. And here's the thing, my friends, we keep saying this, but what does it actually mean? It means that our lives have changed so dramatically that there actually isn't any going back to what we were. That this is actually a moment for transformation. And I think that how we perceive on the word unprecedented in our life really matters in terms of building a new future and a new life for ourselves in our home life and in our work life. And I want to invite all of you that are on the call tonight to not just think about being unprecedented in terms of what's happening in the pandemic, but how are you going to be unprecedented in your own life? How are you going to become an outlier in your own life and experience? Next slide. Next slide. Oh, that's Trump's favorite word, apparently. Well, you know, I mean, he doesn't own the dictionary, you know. <laughs> so how are you going to be unprecedented? by paying attention to your well-being. According to the World Health Organization, mental health is a state in which individuals realize, now listen to this, individuals realize their own abilities and can cope with the stresses of their life. They can be productive, they can be fruitful, they can contribute. Notice that it's not about their physical well-being to contribute to your community, to um, have capabilities and to be aware of that, that is speaking to mind and mindset. So there is a deep understanding now globally that well-being is a mind and body experience. That you can be physically strong, but mentally and emotionally suffering right? You can be mentally, right? Really smart. You've got all the A's. You are checking off all the boxes in terms of how to progress, but you can't walk up the stairs, right? You're not strong enough to carry your own groceries. You don't sleep at night. How many of you right now are having difficulty sleeping either going to sleep or waking up in the middle of the night or early, early in the morning. Sleep is critical. 
Sleep is critical to your body restoring itself, regenerating itself. When we're not sleeping, it means we're more agitated. It means that we gain weight more easily. It means that we are less joyful. It means that stress becomes a deeper, harder process in us. So we're gonna talk about that some more. Let's go to the next slide. Is that the next slide? Oh, sorry. I'm like, I'm seeing doubles. Jeff, I'm, I'm putting so much pressure on you tonight. I'm sorry, talk about stress. So why don't we define stress a little bit? And I don't know if any of you know this, but the word stress was coined it by Hans Selim, who was a Hungarian Canadian. So it was a Canadian who actually was studying mice and rats and started to see the relationship between different kinds of stress. There's good stress called eustress and there's negative stress. And what he started to realize was that stress was a phenomenon in the body. That stress is what actually helped you to run and move when you needed to. When we were in the savanna, right? When, when our ancestors were trying to survive, stress is what allowed them to, you know, harvest and farm and, and kill animals so that they could live and build, right? But now for so many of us, we are living with this extreme stress. And what does stress do? It's not just a word. Stress produces hormones. It secretes cortisol and serotonin that can actually be destructive when we are constantly on fire with stress. And I don't know if you've noticed this in yourself. I don't know if you're aware of how stress behaves in you, but I want you to start paying attention to that today because you cannot have, you cannot have and propel yourself towards great success if you are so stressed out that your body can't enjoy it, can't rest, can't grow from it, can't create in it. You know, one of the things that so many of us need right now is the capacity to come up with new ideas. New ideas when you lose your job. New ideas when you lose a client and that client was 40%, 60% of your business. New ideas when your son or your daughter come to you and they say, I'm so sad. New ideas when someone in your family is ill. When you are so stressed, so full of the adrenaline of stress, it's hard to think. Next slide. So when I talk about the hormones of stress, uh, and I talk about feeling overwhelmed. What I'm talking about is the fight or flight response. Really, it's the fight, flight, or flee. Some of you might feel that right now. You might notice that when somebody comes to you right now, a family member, a friend, a colleague, your boss, your partner, and they say, I've got this problem. Your mind says, I can't hear another problem. And you just want to run. Guess what? Don't judge yourself. This is your nervous system, right? It's your nervous system saying, I am overwhelmed. I am, I am exhausted. My blood pressure is running too high. My heart rate is running too high. I am in a state of stress. And sometimes we're ashamed. Sometimes we feel like, come on, bring on it, bring on some more. Some of us on this call, suffer from the syndrome of wanting to be martyrs. We want to save everybody. Our arms are so wide. It's like, okay, you've got a problem, come over here. Okay, you've got, a, you've, got a, you've got an issue, let me figure out how to fix it. And then you find yourself alone. You find yourself waking up in the middle of the night not knowing how to manage, how to handle what you have to face. And that's why learning to become aware, learning to de-stress, learning to relax 
It's not a nice to have. It is a necessity for your body. Next slide. How are we doing for time, guys? Okay. So that's so here. This this one is really important. So there's something called neuroplasticity. It refers to the physiological changes in the brain that happen as a result of our interactions in our environment. From the time the brain begins to develop in utero until the day we die, there are connections being built in our brain. You see, there's this old idea that as we get older, our brain cells are dying. And yes, if you've had a stroke or you've had a catastrophic event happen to your brain, certain brain cells will die. But do you know that brain cells are also being born? I, I work in the retirement industry and I met a woman a few years ago. She had a stroke and she lost the whole use of her right side of her body. And she'd spent her life never being herself. She'd spent her life never doing what she wanted to do. And she was 86 and she still wanted to be an artist. And the doctor said to her, I know that your right side is paralyzed. We're going to do everything we can, but we don't know that we can help you, that, that your body can regenerate, but you still have your left side. And she said, but I'm not left-handed. I don't even know how to use my left hand. And then, you know, myself and my team, we started to work with her and her doctor. And we told her, as long as you are living, there is more right with you than wrong. And as long as your left side of your body is working, it can learn. And do you know that she's an artist? And I'm telling you, she shames me. I cannot even draw a proper face. This woman can draw with such precision with her left hand, she can paint, right? Never think that you're too old, you're too sick, you're, you're not good enough to learn something new. Neuroplasticity is in all of us. It has no gender, it has no race, it has no name beyond the capacity for neurons in your brain to grow. So don't be afraid right now to teach yourself something new. This is actually a moment with all the access we have to online learning, free or paid, to train yourself into something else. Next slide. So part of neurogenesis, and the word sounds really, you know, kind of, you know, huge and, and you know, maybe it sounds a bit like scientific and, and obviously it is, but this thing is so simple to explain. I'm not even gonna use all the, the verbiage that I have here. There's a great book, everyone should get it. It's called Spark. It's by a, a physician uh, by the name of Dr. John Ray T. Spark, S-P-A-R-K. Here it is, my friends. I'm gonna break it down very quickly. We just talked about neuroplasticity and the brain and creating creating new neurons and learning new things. And as you learn new new learn new things, new new pathways grow in your brain. Well, guess what helps to generate that? Aerobic exercise. Yes, I said it. And for those of you who are like, well, I don't want to exercise and I haven't exercised in 20 years, and you know, I'm not gonna become an athlete does not matter. Every one of us has a heart. And every one of us requires a certain amount of aerobic activity. When our heart rate a few times a week goes a little bit higher than it's supposed to, that actually helps our brain. And in the last 10 years, the science of neurogenesis has just been exploding. There's thousands of research papers now showing the relationship between neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. So right there, though, there are two things that you can do. You can learn something new and you can start moving your body and increasing your heart rate. Guess what? You don't have to do it for one hour every day, folks. 15 minutes a day, right? Where you are stressing your body a little bit helps to energize your whole body system. Next slide. Here's the other piece. 
cognitive diversity. So we talk about diversity all the time. And right now we're talking about inclusion, right? And equity and the value of diversity. But do we have diversity in our lives? Do we have diversity in terms of what we're reading and learning and listening to and watching on Netflix and Prime and Crave? Are we exploring new stories? When we do that, and when we start to explore new viewpoints, that's not just about other people becoming more inclusive. Guess what? It makes you more inclusive. It makes you able to learn about new ways of doing things. The one good thing about the pandemic is that for decades, we've been told no about so many things. How many people in 2018 and 2019 were told they couldn't work from home? And now, not only are they working uh, from home, but people are working harder from home. People are producing more work from home than they ever thought they could. So don't believe the hype. Whatever you're interested in grows your brain. Every time you move your body and you make it a little, and you stress your body a little bit, you increase your brain's ability to do new things. And then when you open yourself up, to new ideas, new stories, new people, all of a sudden, especially as professionals and students, you start to learn that you don't have to be in a box, that there are different ways that you can grow and expand in the world. Next slide. Kind of got a Vanna White thing going, right? Or she turns, Vanna White turns the box. So here's the thing we're gonna get into, and I, I'm gonna speed up now. I'm gonna speed up on mindfulness. <laughs> um, mindfulness is obviously thousands of years old and this type of wisdom tradition is born from uh, Buddhism and Eastern traditions. However, it's in every religion. It's in every culture. Every culture has a place where they value prayer, the dignity of silence, right? the value of reflection. Mindfulness is that. And what we know from a science-based point of view, well, you know, the scientists, they had to figure out, we got to prove that this thing is wrong or this thing is right. What they ended up discovering was that actually mindfulness, meditation, prayer, changes the prefrontal cortex of the brain right? It changes how our brains function. And part of the reason why, and I just want to encourage everyone to do this. Let's go to the next slide. And in fact, actually, if you can, I'm going to talk you through this. Make sure you're comfortable. What we've discovered, especially in the last 20 years, is that when you spend time on, um, when you spend time consciously in the present moment, noticing your in-breath and your out-breath, that it actually changes, not just how you feel in terms of relaxation, but this is the piece that's the most important. It changes how you process information. So for so many of us right now, as we go through this very transformative and unprecedented time, we need space built into our day, into our week, into our life that allows us to be prayerful, mindful, reflective. And then what happens is an awareness grows inside of us. So I wanna encourage you to sit up really straight, as straight as you can, as though there's a string pulling you from the crown of your head. You might even pull your shoulders together you know, pull your shoulders together, that lifts your chest up. And you lift your chest because you're doing, you're doing something really powerful. You're meeting and greeting yourself. And this is a self that is unlike any other self. This is a self that has your unique mind and your unique breath. And I want to encourage you now to make sure you're grounded by placing your hands on your thighs. So the lower body is grounded. The soles of the feet even maybe press into the floor if your shoes are off. 
And then you roll your shoulders back and you lift your chest. And then your spine becomes long because right now you're going to become a witness. A witness to what? Shay? No. You're a witness to yourself. You are a witness who has compassion. You are a witness who is going to be radically honest. You are a witness who has an intention for yourself. And as you sit here with a straight spine and a chest lifted with dignity to meet yourself, be still. And as you become still, notice your in-breath. And as you notice your in-breath, which is like a tree with branches that grow, that breath expands in you. And as that breath expands in you, and as your stomach expands, you hold the breath. Three, two, one. And now release the breath on the count of four. Four, three, two, one. And if the eyes aren't closed or if they're not descending down, close them now. And then call on your imagination. Call on your imagination. And what I want to tell you is that if you have a dream, if there is an idea you have, there's something you want to pursue, well, here's what I want you to know about that. Your dreams are visions. You're already doing it. You're already creating it. Your soul and your spirit understand you and accept you. The question is, do you understand and do you accept yourself? And when you can do that, when you can accept yourself, when you can be compassionate with yourself, when you can sit in reflection and breathe in, three, two, one, hold the breath, four, three, two, one, and now, and now, exhale the breath, six, five, four, three, two, one. Awareness grows inside of you. Wisdom expands inside of you. My friends, I want you to make a fist with your hands. Make a fist with your whole body. Tighten your whole body. And that sternum that was lifting, that chest that was getting bigger and wider, and that spine that was lengthening, tighten it here. And sit so firmly as though you are meeting the most important person in your life. Because you are this person with your name and your in-breath, three, two, one, and your out-breath, four, three, two, one. This person, this person is full of vision. This person is full of ability and capability. Sit here, make a fist with your body once more, Tight, tight, hold. Now wait, my friends. I just want you to contemplate the breath before you take it out, before you release it out. Because we want it to be nice and long because it's the exhalation that helps you to relax. I want you to open your mouth, let your whole body relax and slumber down and let the sound of ah come out. And just like that, just like that, you are in a different space. Just like that, you have transitioned into awareness. And now you set a plan. Now you dream a new path. And you believe in that path. And that path requires confidence and self-esteem. My friends, I say to you, I say to you tonight, these are not just nice words. These words have science 
and thousands of years of wisdom behind them. Take this time to pay attention. Understand that your suffering right now is temporary and that everything you need to propel you forward into the future is already in you. It's already in you. And when you pay attention to that, and you focus on that, the world, the world, my friends, that is your voice. In the sanctity of this moment, I am so grateful for your time. Thank you. Oh my God. Griffin, I, I, I shortened it. Jeff, I shortened it. We're good. <laughs> oh my God. Let's do this again tomorrow. And can, can you come and sit beside my desk every day, please? Every day, every day. <laughs> every day. Every day. Every day. That was amazing. Thank you. We are amazing. We, as human beings, we are better than we know. And I know there's a lot of grief. And I know there's a lot of suffering right now, but those of us who are here, those of us who are living, we must find the courage in ourselves to take a chance on ourselves, right? And when we do that, nothing can stop us, nothing. Okay. Guys, if you have a question, I'm almost tearing up. I don't know what to say, but um, we have a few minutes for comments, uh, Q and A. There's there's a lot of comments in the chat. Are there <laughs> any questions? Yeah. yeah, questions. I think you would. I was. I looked just now. No questions yet. No questions yet. Thank you, Jeff. For, you know, the other thing is, for any of you who are, you know, struggling with creating the space to do this type of work with yourself, maybe offer it to a family member or friend, like somebody in your life that you care about who is struggling, and do it with them together. Do it on the phone. Do it on Zoom. Just noticing your breath. Just learning to breathe together and then dream together. We, right now especially, because of what's happening in the media, and, and you know, we know so much about each other's lives right now, but we don't know a lot about each other's hearts, right? And there's a lot of trauma happening right now, but not a lot of healing. So when we start to pay attention in a technical way to our physiology and create space to move and think, we begin to light up and we de-traumatize ourselves. And especially for people of color right now, we're seeing things that are so damaging, so hurtful, so fear-based that we are sometimes dwelling in things that are not even happening to us. And we have to pay attention to that. So, so you know, I, I have been doing this work for over 35 years now, right? I'm very blessed. I had a lot of trauma when I was a kid. I went through many things. And I have found that wellness and looking at and yoga, and it's not about taking anyone else's culture, but yoga and looking at different wisdom traditions from the East, from Africa, looking at those connections and then looking at how they resonate in me. And then coming from a Christian culture, I, I, some, I use, I mean, for those of you who are Christians who are, might feel like uncomfortable about yoga or meditation and your Christian faith, or if you're, you know, um, a different faith and you feel uncomfortable with it, I use the Psalms sometimes in my, in my meditations, right? I, I connect to the gospel through my meditations. You can make your own formula for wellness. It is all in you. And when you do that, you create new ways, new pathways. OK. 
If we have any question, that gives us a few more minutes for the breakout room. Um, or we can actually allow Shay to talk to us some more. But I encourage everybody, you know, really show your face. Let's love together. Let's see each other. Let's uh, empower each other. Let's feed off each other's positive energy. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're all going to go to breakout rooms where our awesome, awesome mentors can, you know, work with us to really navigate perhaps what we experienced today. And she has given us some tips on what we can do in the breakout rooms. So, yeah. If you're ready, I think we can go ahead and go to the breakout rooms. That will actually give Shay more time to wrap up when we come back. Sure. Unless anybody have a question. To, oh, that's a baby's hand. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long are we going to break out? Okay. What do you all think? 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Um, let's do 15 minutes and then we can talk to Shay again. That sounds good. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. So, um, Jeff, are you ready? I know you were doing hundred things at the same time. I poor Jeff. My God, he really, you know, my goddess. He really had to work there. <laughs> so let me know if you're ready, and so we we will move to our breakout rooms. And and, and you know, everyone, you can start tonight with some of these things, right? You know read one new thing, couple sentences, and do some breathing before you go to bed, really helps. Absolutely. Okay. okay, on your screen, you probably see a little notification. So click on join breakout room. See you all later. Hello, 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 Carol, Dr. Chichi, how are you? Hi, hey, Diamond. I'm good. <laughs> see you. Hello, Brianna. Brianna is our new volunteer. Brianna, can I have the pleasure of seeing your face? I'm actually waiting for Nihil, so not sure what's going on. This is supposed to be Nihil's room. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Huh? Here you are. Hi. Did, did I go to a different room? <laughs> <laughs> I might have gone to Julie's room. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So how are you this evening, this afternoon? It is still afternoon to have here in Calgary. <laughs> Man, she almost got me tearing up. Um, for me, that was... Mm, mm, mm. Indeed. I'll, let, I'll let the others tell me what they thought. <laughs> It is, it is really amazing. And I would like to welcome everyone here uh, to this wonderful conversation, starting with what She has given us. Mm. This is amazing. Mm. I never could have imagined how powerful this meditation was, not until I took a training in it. Mm. It was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. You are highly welcome. We have our question to begin with. What does it mean to be strong in this difficult time? What does it mean to be strong in these difficult times? We have had a lot. A lot has, has been said. And we are here to discuss about them. What are we bringing into this conversation? to talk about what is strength would mean. I have little one making noise in a way in the background. Forgive me about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to let the others talk before I do. So Dr. Chi Chi, Diamond, Jane, Brianna, take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is um, Caroline. 
she calls me Chichi. Anyway, my own, um, what I think about um, being strong with all that is going on, it's about um, waking up, keeping your head straight, doing what you're supposed to do, trying to be consistent with your routines, like um, dressing your bed, saying your prayers, cooking, taking care of the kids, doing a little exercise, um, having a, a, aligning your mind and spirit because it's very essential to achieve your goals for the day. Having a routine planned out, trying to follow your routine because um, a lot is going on right now and um, people are depressed with the whole lockdown. People are disappointed. I mean, a lady that wants to fix her nails, she can't even get, it, get to somewhere to do that. You want to fix your hair. You can't look good the way you want. You want to hang out with friends. A lot of limitations. So for me, what I think is just having a routine, being consistent, and just looking forward to a better tomorrow. With that, you have this inner strength to push on. So that's what I have to offer. Wow, amazing, Car Caroline. Uh, this is excellent you know, finding inner strength to move forward. Um, what do you normally do as a regular routine that others can learn from to keep that moving? So is this question for Caroline or for anybody? For Caroline. I didn't get can you can you repeat the question I, I was a little bit distracted what do you normally do as a routine to have this inner strength to move forward okay um I'm happily married I have I have two daughters so I wake up in the morning I say my prayers I uh, quickly make a breakfast for my husband he, he likes smoothie then um, I pack his lunch, take care of my daughter, and do a little workout, 30 minutes minimum, make lunch, ensure the house is in order, pick up my books, because um, I'm a medical, I'm an international medical graduate, so I'm preparing for my exams. So I get to study. So I have this routine I try to do every day. It's not easy, but I just keep, pushing to ensure I meet my daily targets. So that's much about it. <laughs> then I have free time. I have, I have free time. Like I have two hours I give free time just in case something comes up. I need to see someone, you know, mm -hmm. just to, that's, that's it. <laughs> wow. Thank that's you. Excellent. That's excellent. Any other person? Emma, you're just smiling. Do you want to share? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, my son is like a little bit uh, crazy oh. today, as, as you can hear. <laughs> um, I can definitely relate to Caroline when it comes to trying to do your everyday routine during this hard time right now and it's kind of difficult to stick to it because of like all the new regulations and stuff like that that we have to abide by and not to mention keeping a positive healthy mental state as well it's not easy um i can definitely say that because i've suffered from severe depression and anxiety since this started and I've uh, struggled with it off and on but what I do to keep myself like motivated every day is <laughs> um how cute go ahead don't worry about I that. try to keep myself in a positive state like what I do is I just take a moment to myself to go sit on my back step and just close my eyes and just breathe and I just think to myself, well, the positive things I have going for me right now, even if they're like really small, it's still something positive to think about. Wow, that's amazing. That's really amazing. Finding a comfort place for you to breathe. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, I think this is, you know, 
something that we all could consider as a usual thing for us. Uh, there is great uh, greatness in it. But, you know, uh, learning from what Che was presenting, this is amazing. Any other person? Hello, guys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, okay, Brenna is driving. I don't know if she can say anything. Jane and Aja and Zekwe. Um, so just to bring you up to date, I know I just noticed you just joined us. We are just sharing what's um, how we stay strong, how we stay focused, routines that we formed this pandemic for anybody that want to say anything. You know, for me, um, I'm not that disciplined. Uh, and so throughout the pandemic, I've tried so many things. <laughs> Sometimes I will be consistent and I will walk out every morning and then I get tired of that. Um, then I move into cooking. <laughs> Cooking, 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 or cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. But what I have found that has worked for me and that continue to work for me through the ups and down is positive thinking and, and, and the ability to be grateful. I remind myself every day that somebody didn't wake up today. And immediately that I immediately I think about that, then I feel okay. Less complaining. Less um, finding faults. Because with this pandemic, like Caroline said, it's hard to do your hair. It's hard to look the way you want to look. And I'm, I like meeting people. I like socializing. I like partying. I like having fun. And it's one thing this pandemic has pretty much erased completely. But I'm also lucky, and I see uh, um, IJ, uh, you know, I'm also lucky to have a network, right, which she is part of that, my network where we kind of share everything and everything. We are silly together, we are happy together, we cry together, we challenge each other. And for me, I think that network and the ability to stay grateful is what has kept me sane this period. And I, I wouldn't lie if I, if I don't say BMI and the mission behind BMI has helped me to to stay positive you know especially when people call me to share one positive story or the other or how we've impacted them so that's mine your mute yes. that's amazing amazing evangeline um uh, it is equally important and you know with us sharing the strengths that we have is also something that energizes us for us to propel, move forward in a bold step. And this is where resilience comes. Uh, basically, let me share a bit of myself. I'm very grateful and thankful to my wife uh, for being around all the time and for having you know, positive energy and a wonderful conversation. And this is something that we normally have. Uh, she she work at night time. I would be home with my little one, very energetic, and have you know a lot of fun uh, to go around with, and you know <laughs> so many great things that I like. I also overwork myself. I'm on top of everything, like reading, writing, and then you know <laughs> doing other activities, last meetings, and so many things. I see flying in the evening, uh, something that I, I like to do as well, feeling, you know, um, that I'm making impact in the life of other people as well. That energizes me. Um, 
especially uh, right after you know the uh, the uh, COVID nineteen restriction thing that you know prevent us from doing our daily life or normal life, normal thing uh, that we normally do. The only thing I considered was to you know take out my wife, go for a ride. And then it would be a time where I can take my kids out and then drive across the, the, the city. This is amazing because when you are limited to a specific location, you feel that, you know, uh, your energy is dropping. And by, you know, re-energizing yourself, you have to do something. And to be active means to do something either from you know, the same place or out of the same place. This is how you can, you know, keep your energy level uh, on tech and be able to move forward. And this is what I have been doing. I really appreciate being part of this, this great conversation. And learning from one another is another important thing. But one thing important, taking care of ourselves. Taking care of myself is what I like the most because that's where my strength come from. So that I connect and be able to function and impact them positively as well as impacting me in a positive way. Thank you very much. Hmm. Thank you for sharing. AJ, you wanna say something? You have mute, I think. Hi everyone. Um, I'm at work. You can see my. <laughs> I hope they don't catch me. <laughs> anyway, I'm just gonna be brief. Like um, Evangeline said, um, we belong to this group of. Um, they are just um, students from our secondary school years, and we just have fun. We just have real fun. You know, so and we support each other. So um, for this month, we are um, doing exercises, and um, it was initiated by Evangeline. <laughs> so we do exercises, we cook, we teach each other how to cook. If you're bereaved, we support you. Um, if you're lacking compliments. Oh my goodness, you get a whole lot of compliments. So we encourage each other in that group to be yourself. And uh, from the look of things, you know that um, we are all hard workers. You know, we are all hard workers. We are above 40 and we all look like uh, we are in our 20s. So this pandemic, that group has really helped us. So for this pandemic period, I'm still at work. So the lockdown does not affect me because I'm a nurse. I'm still here, so, but I have to, and my kids are at home. They are doing the online thing. So that's one thing that keeps me going. And then my family. And then um, I hear you, somebody said something about being positive, that's it. And right now I'm taking care of me. And and my family too, but I have to take care of me first. You can see my hair. <laughs> you can see my, right now I do not give a hoot what people think. As far as I know that I'm doing the right thing at the right time, uh, you know, so that's how I'm moving on. And then another thing um, for this period is um, upgrading yourself. That's one thing. I said because I'm uh, trying to get back to school. Yeah, you learn things every day, learn new things that will propel you forward. You know, forget everything about negativity. You know, we crack jokes. I crack jokes even my, in my home, everywhere. Even on that platform, they know me as somebody that I will, I will tease you. You know, so, and another thing is stress from work that it's everywhere so but you just learn to be positive um pray i pray a lot i pray a lot because i that's one thing that nobody should should remove from their their list you pray to god um you thank him for this life 
you, you I don't know, I ask him to guide and protect my family my, from this pandemic, you know? So um, that's it. You just have to work hard and uh, keep your mind thinking positively, you know? Yeah, so every day I'm like, okay, what will I achieve today? I want to achieve something today. I want to achieve something today. So a day that I don't get anything done, I do not, I just feel, okay, he's wasted, you know? So I look forward to what am I going to do today? How will I impact the next person positively? So, and every morning I come to work, before I leave, I say, God, I am a blessing. Let me be a blessing unto others. Let me be a blessing unto others in any way that I can. You know, so that's it. So I'm going to run now. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. So that's how we're moving and going <laughs> on um, with this um, uh, COVID-19. And I pray that it doesn't get to any of us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, HJ. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful work. And, you know, very important that we have to take care of ourselves. We have to learn new things. It is time for us to propel. If you have done something and you, are, you have done it uh, for quite a bit long, and then move forward with it. If it is something that you wanted to continue with, or if you want to change and you know, uh, do a new things or something really new, just do it. Uh, I really love that. So before our time wrap up, uh, what would be two words that we could say to our folks out there? Jane, do you want to share before we do the two words? To our viewers. Eh? I was wondering if Jane wants to share anything. Yeah. I think we have five minutes yeah. before yeah. we wrap up. Mm -hmm. No pressure if you don't want to. We're just going to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but what am I sharing now? Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, what have what's your routine what's keeping you strong okay. moving this period uh well uh i have a uh, hi everyone uh my name is jane i actually do have a healthy routine i'm a workaholic <laughs> so i uh, i work 24 hours around the clock uh, as i am talking to you guys i'm walking I'm actually cooking. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to be rude. I was cooking, I was hungry. I wanted to eat something. I've not had my lunch. So my, uh, yeah, my routine is work. Um, uh, honestly, this year I promised myself that I would be, um, I, will, I will spend like two hours in going out for a walk like because of this COVID, uh, a lot of things have changed. Uh, I'm an outgoing person. I, I go out and meet clients. So, with this change, it's kind of a little bit uh, impacting me in a little way, like in terms of, I feel a little bit, um, I'm not gonna call it depression, but it's kind of a little bit disappointed. Like, you know, I don't really have that routine that I, like in the morning, I'm always going somewhere, meeting clients, but now I don't. So what keeps me going, it's my work. And I also try to have time to meet with some of my friends. Uh, we do a little bit yoga, and then also we actually go for a run. So that keeps me active, but I don't really do that a lot. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's me. Uh, hopefully, I could uh, relax like every one of you. I I try. I, I love everyone's uh, stories and how you know how organized. Actually, I would say. Uh, so that, that actually get me interested because I really want to be okay. I really want to have this beautiful routine that I wake up in the morning, clean and do this. I don't have that routine. So that's me. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jane. I think you have a routine working around the clock 24 hours. <laughs> so long as you can manage it and you are still taking care of yourself. You look fresh and that's what it is. <laughs> Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So anyway, uh, extending this uh, to uh, uh, the rest of us. So, what would be the two words that we can say to our participants, our viewers out there? 
as the food rat. Show up. <laughs> Just show up. <laughs> Caroline, you're smiling. Any two words you're going to give us? Stay safe. Well, uh, like that. Oh, <laughs> stay, she said, stay safe. That's, that's a, a very important for me. Um, being a student, you know, I'm an international medical graduate. I'm preparing for an exam. So I keep saying consistent. Mm -hmm. I keep telling myself I need to be consistent. You know, yeah. that's just one word I have then. Stay safe. <laughs> okay. Okay. IJ, can you block your video, please? Okay. Thank you. Any other person? Uh, yeah, here, Jane. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, stay positive, okay? Uh, this craziness that is happening right now, it's going to, they're all going to go away very soon. So be positive and be happy. You know, no matter what comes your way, just brush it off and just keep going, keep working. You, you can get there. That's wonderful. Excellent. <laughs> Diamond? Diamond, we are waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to, it would just need to like stay strong and stay safe, <laughs> to be honest, because in this time, you definitely need to continue to stay strong, especially mentally. Okay. That's wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Evangeline, can you conclude our session? Oh. This has been amazing, um, you know, sharing this space and this energy with all of you, getting to um, know a little bit of you, a little bit of your routine, you all allowing us to come into your presence. Um, this really been enriching. I say to everybody shine. Don't let nobody hold you back. Don't let nobody tell you you can't. Don't let nobody tell you you don't matter. Be selfish. It's okay to be selfish. Mm -hmm. um, selfish in loving yourself. Selfish in putting you first. Selfish in thinking, you know, I need to be healthy. I need to be strong. And because that's the only way you are able to take care of the people around you. You know, Diamond, you say cleaning and cooking. If you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to cook and play. Right, and, and Caroline, you say you're reading your book. You don't take care of yourself. You know that book not going to matter, mm -hmm. right? Jane, uh, the same thing. If you don't take care of yourself, 24 hours that you are doing, right? You're not gonna be able to have enough stamina to do that. So I actually employ you, Jane, 24 hours work is good, round the clock is good, but remember to take a moment. Like she said, mm -hmm. read. You know, um, I see the time is running now. They're telling us we have to come back, but stay safe and united and love one another. Peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can uh, join the team. Uh, thank you. See you over there. I think we're slowing, slowly coming back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> Hello, Father Charles. Hello, Nez. Hello, Ijama, Irene, IJ, Brianna, Oladi, Precious. Hello, hello. Dave Patrick. Woohoo. Hello, Jill. As we wait for the other people to wrap up and come back. Hello, hello. Lala, I see you still staying upright. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know if anybody's breakout room was as fire as ours, but we had Shay in our breakout room. So oh sorry, sorry for anybody who didn't have Shay, but. Yeah, you cut off her. <laughs> Stop showing off. That's not fair. But we had a good group.
<laughs> we had we we had Equi and Pat, Patrick lead yes. us. Uh, excellent. There okay, we go. Excellent, 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 excellent. I just have to show off a little bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 we had Nihil and we had uh, Jane, Caroline, Diamond. So you can imagine it was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, I forgot to show the elf. Oh, hi, Trisha. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody, everybody was good. Like everybody was sharing. Shay, you opened like a, a door. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. One question for Shay, if I may. Yes. Absolutely. I hope you have written a book. <laughs> Please don't laugh at all because some of us we believe in a printed matter where we can always make reference. To. Yeah. If all this knowledge is just anywhere yeah. else and not in a volume like this where I can go and pick it up sometime and read Chase thoughts. Yeah. Then you have you have you have defeated us. <laughs> well, it, it's so it's please. in the process. It's in the okay. process actually. I, so they, I th thank you for that affirmation. I really appreciate I'm glad. it. Yes. No, okay. you're right. All right. You're right. And, you know, sometimes we're also, we're hustling so much that we are not uh, building our own knowledge management system. Mm -hmm. And we have to be, all of us, very, very careful about that. So I'm, I'm yeah. grateful that you said that. Just another reminder to get, get that thing moving. Could, um, could I ask well, a question? Yes. <laughs> um, so is this to stay as well? Uh, it's Fazila here. Um, in our breakout group, of course, accolade all went to you, and we praise, praise down to you for what you did tonight. I would like to know, do you have a podcast or do you have a soundbite clip of what you did for us tonight that yes. we can all dial into uh -huh. or, or even pay what it's a dollar or something? Because I think the world needs um, to hear your voice. And I uh, think, you know, there's Deepak Chopra, who is wonderful and make millions. I don't care about him. But I think I'd like to listen to you. And I'm sure <laughs> lots of people would like to listen to you, too. Very much yes. so. Yes. You know, we're going to be actually doing something with um, the mentor group here. I know Ingrid and, and Avanti mm -hmm. and I have been talking. And I do have so we'll leave some of that information but I've actually got a meditation that's specifically for this group mm -hmm. and also to, to Ingrid um, so that um, you can realize that but again thank you for that that endorsement I mean I, I think you know we were talking about in our, in our group we were talking about boldness about mm -hmm. to be bold and I think it took me I do think it took 30 years to actually uh, become really clear. I've always been fairly courageous about doing things, but to, to become really clear about wellness as a value proposition. Mm -hmm. And one thing I can say to you is that, you know, when the pandemic started of a couple months into it, I lost my biggest client and it was about 60% oh. of my business. Wow. I, and no word of a lie, I replaced that business within 90 days. Oh. And if I, and I couldn't have done that 20 years ago. And that, and that is what I think happens when you're clear about your process, you're not apologizing about what you do or how you do it. And it's not about what other people see or, or, or think. It's really about, do you know your stuff? Do you have your experience? And are you, do you have something, a product or service that is of service? And can you be clear about that? I think the pandemic, I, I don't think the, I think the pandemic is offering that opportunity to all of us. It's not a purposeful opportunity. Don't get mm. me wrong. I'm not saying no, that, you know, that this has been a good thing, but I think I do think that this pandemic, for those of us who are still standing, you know, or, or, or lying down and hanging on, I do think we have to acknowledge the fact that we're still here and that we're more resilient than we ever imagined and that we have to use everything we're gathering during this pandemic, use everything 
and, and build it into something for the future and for when this pandemic is over. This is not a time to give up. It is not a time you can be fearful, but not afraid. And this is a time to just keep moving forward no matter what is happening. Just keep moving forward. So just a one follow-up to say that I appreciate what you'd be doing for the group and I'm part of the group that I'm coming to these meetings. But for example, if you had what you did on sale, yes, I can buy it for my sisters. I can buy it for many other sisters. I can share it with yes. friends around the world, women of color from you know my community in Guyana or where I lived in South Africa. There's, I'm just saying you need to do that. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, and, in, it's in process right now. Good. What I <sighs> my my clients right now are international and they are all corporate. And I also, I, I teach, I certify other teachers. So I've been, you know, we, we've been gradually, you know, growing and growing and growing and I have a team. So I, again, I do appreciate that affirmation. And I think, you know, I think I'm at a place if I can be personal and usually I am personal. I don't, I'm pretty open. <laughs> My, it's one of the things my mother loved and hated about me <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, um, is that I, I feel like it took me many years just to gather information about how to teach and share. Uh, I have to share one of my big learnings. Before the pandemic, I was resisting teaching online. Oh. I, everything I did, you know, you fly here fly there, travel. I was doing all of that. And I always said, it's the, the physical and the human experience that I value so much. And I absolutely do, but I've learned during the pandemic and I was ready already to go online, but I learned that that was one avenue. There's so many more people you can reach this way and you can create another element of intimacy and connection. Um, and it's been enthralling to, to, to learn this over the last you know, 14 months, I have to tell you. And I have to say also, I'm not gonna pretend I've experienced a tremendous amount of tragedy as I've gone through this pandemic. I lost my mom during the pandemic. I lost a part of my business during the pandemic. And, um, but because of the tools that I had learned through, through my mother, through the work that I did in my education, I was able to keep moving forward. Doesn't mean that I'm not in a state of grief. Grief is like this incredible journey, right? But there's, there are tools. And, and the thing that I find frustrating, I don't know about all of you, but one of the things that I find frustrating right now is that you have a government leader come out and say, oh, we're shutting things down or, you know, we're, we, here's another lockdown. But they offer nothing else in terms of guidance, in terms of learning to care for yourself, in terms of looking at who are the educators in our society who can teach us about the skills of well-being, the skills of being uh, emotionally capable. So many of us are at home with our families. Our families are not always safe places, right? And as, as parents or guardians, what do you do? So, so you have leaders and business people who say, you know, lock things down and here's the money and where's the business framework, et cetera, et cetera. But then no options for tools. Me, now I feel very empowered to say, okay, we got to gather toolboxes. We have to start sharing those toolboxes mm -hmm. and helping people because when everyone gets a little bit of help, this community, this neighborhood, this society actually gets better. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, Shay. Um, Thank you. I almost feel like we have to do this again so we can continue. Um, but I'm also looking at a time and I want to respect everybody's time. Um, Jeb, do you want to share um, the screen?
one of the things that we want to do is ensure that we provide um, some little things for everybody that's been part of our sessions. Um, the lockdown, it's not making it easy. Mm -hmm. So what we, I want everybody to do is to please take down this phone number and call and so that we can arrange a pickup, a drop off if we can, but mainly pick up for, I, I understand Caribbeans call it uh, provisions. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that you can pick up provisions. We, we simply say pick rice and bag of beans and whatever that we have and COVID protective gears. Uh, please call 416-918-4392. <clears throat> That's really, um, I will be the one answering the call. Let's arrange how we can do this, um, meet each other. Uh, and again, pick some of these provisions that we have. Yeah. These are crucial times. We must continue to stick together. I said this last time and I'm repeating it on purpose. You know, we need to ensure no black person is left behind. Let's stay connected, right? Follow us uh, at our social media pages, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, please let's make that word propel black sources a household name. Let's make it go viral. Tweet, text, hash, propel black sources. And don't forget to call, please, or email me. You all have my emails so that we can arrange how we can. We already have a lot of them, but so sitting here, but we are not allowed to gather somewhere and give it out. So we just have to call and do this arrangement. Beautiful. I thank all of you for allowing us to be part of your evening. I thank you for joining us. I thank you awesome mentors. And I thank you everybody that joined. I see familiar faces there, Patrick. I see my big sister, Tina Nosike. And all of you, all of you, in grade. Mm. Thank you. Until Thank next you. time, I'm your host, Evangeline Chima. Cha cha. Thank you. Bye, everyone. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Let's do this again Bye. tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <In the screen. laughs> Evangeline, I hope you have Chase connection. We need to reach out to her. Yes. <laughs> okay. <Absolutely. laughs> Okay, good night. Just nice. sharing the screen. I want to see those remaining. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Diamond, nice meeting you. Let's Thank you, Angelica, Bye. for coming. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Keisha. Good luck with that exam tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Angelica, blessing. Thank you, everybody. Father Charles, thank you. Jojo, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm always by your side. Yeah, I see that. I appreciate you. <laughs> Ingrid, you're wonderful. I, I really need to get, get to meet you one day. Yes, you're as soon of, as, as this, this lockdown is finished. <laughs> so much wisdom. CCJ, thank you. I, say, I hope you enjoy Bye. this. Bye. Bye, patients. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, that was nice. This. I hope you all had fun. Jeff. Woo Jeff, 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 Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you all. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye. Yeah.